a little bit of a, a, I guess, of a surprise there in the second half, you know, with, with the Texans being able to, to come back and, and Kevin Byard actually, you know, I'm sure you heard it said that the D kind of slept walked a little bit there in the second half. What, what do you think um, attributed to that in, in general? And, and maybe, um, you know, in particular, what, what gave um, Elijah a difficult time uh, against uh, Danny Amendola? Yeah, I mean, obviously it was a tale of two halves there. Obviously, we played pretty well in the first half, and for whatever reason, in the second half, we didn't execute. Um, felt like there was some communication breakdowns. Um, and like it's been all year. I mean, everything goes back to the ability to rush and the ability to cover, and it goes hand in hand. Um, some of those on Elijah, those him both got across the field on, right? You got to be able to factor. I think Peco was on his way on one. He beat the guard and slipped down. Um, just after beating the guard and and then the play gets extended and eventually, I mean, those guys are going to uncover or separate a little bit. Um, but yeah, just our execution. I thought we got sloppy um, there in the second half. We got to be better. We have good meetings, meetings this morning, kind of go through that stuff. Joe Retro. Yeah, Shane, just wondering, uh, you know, from a team-wide perspective, even beyond the defense, but with 91 guys uh, participating, you know, setting an NFL record, you have any particular pride in that? Is there any particular sense of pride of that in the building? And um, I guess is, is is there is there an art beyond, you know, everybody be ready and be a professional. Is there an art to making that work? Yeah, I mean, uh, you guys have heard it all year long. It, it sounds cliche, but – um, I mean, it truly is a next man up mentality. I think, I think we've approached every week um, throughout the season telling these guys they got to be ready to go, whether it's COVID, whether it's injuries, um, and making sure that every guy in the room is engaged and prepared and understands the game plan, understands the opponent. Um, it's not just lip service. Like a lot of times these guys in the squad, whatever else, they might not be as engaged um, with what's going on. And I think this year was as evident as any. Like every single guy's got to be prepared to play no matter what the circumstance is. Um, and those guys bought into it. And I think they've, they've been able to stay engaged and they've made the most of their opportunities. And I, I think that leads into it too. Like when you see guys get opportunities and take advantage of them, I think other guys kind of recognize that too. And they're waiting for their opportunity. They're going to make sure they're prepared for their opportunity. Um, so I think they guys have been able to kind of feed off each other throughout the year in that regard. And we've had a lot of guys step up and, and contribute, and it's been good to see for us and for them. Uh, Jim? Shane, I guess Mike noted yesterday you guys have faced Buffalo, New England, Pittsburgh, you know, some some possibilities uh, for you have not faced – Oak. I'm sorry, New England and Pittsburgh have not faced Oakland and Cincy. Do you spend any time – Looking back over some of those possibilities, you'll look at some teams you haven't played or you drive you crazy trying to do some prep work facing the unknown. Yeah, I mean, uh, we got to take advantage of our time, right? Like, not only is it to get rest, but it is to, to get familiar with these guys, with these opponents uh, that we haven't played, whether it's the Bengals or the Raiders. I mean, even going back and seeing kind of what New England's done since we played them last, um, Pittsburgh, the same deal. So, I mean, obviously, we got a little bit more of an understanding of who they are, especially when it comes to personnel um, and what what adjustments they might have made schematically from now until whenever we play them. That, that's when I have to be something to look at. But I think just getting familiar with the teams we haven't played. I think Cincinnati and the Raiders, uh, just because we haven't faced them, we're trying to figure out their personnel, learn what they do, learn their skill sets, all those types of things, and then we'll start start discussing some scheme things as the week goes on. Uh, Corey? Hey, Shane, uh, it took 18 weeks, but uh, you suddenly have more middle linebackers than you know what to do with. Uh, how do you decide who goes in each game? Is it strictly matchup related or Zach and David just simply your, your best two? Yeah, I think that by week, we're going to have to kind of look at that and see where we feel like we're best. Um, I think throughout the week, it's something we're going to have to evaluate, too. I mean, we got we got four guys who started and played a lot of football, right? So um, they're all competitive. They all want to be out there. 
And I think for us as a coaching staff, it's it's a great problem to have. It really is. I mean, there's some tough conversations that come along with that, but that's that's part of the game. That's part of being a professional. Um, can't say enough about Rashawn and Jay on last week and how they how they handled it uh, like pros, and they were cheering those guys on. They were trying to help them out on the sideline, um, and that's going to be a thing when you look at week in and week out as this thing hopefully continues. Uh, just who we see fit based on game plan, based on what what they're doing offensively, um, to see who we can get out there to hopefully give us what we're looking for, right? So, I mean, it's it, it is it's it's a tough tough situation at times, but at the same time, when you've got good guys who are team guys and who are bought in, um, they're going to continue to work hard. And again, we'll kind of see how how it unfolds here later this week and going into next week. Who's going to get a lot of those stats? Uh, Paul, what's Kyle's growth curve been like? I know he's uh, a run stuffer, getting a sack in that game. Seems like a dirty work guy who's doing better. Yeah, he is. He, uh, I mean, I thought he was doing a good job in training camp um, when he was here working, and thought he. Thought he's like all these other guys, Paul. He's taking advantage of his opportunity. No different than Naquan took advantage of his, his opportunity. I think there, there's some competition in that room as well, which is always a great thing to have on the roster throughout the year. Um, hopefully it speeds up Tierra and it speeds up Naquan getting back, right? Um, but he's, he's done a really good job for us. I think he takes coaching well. Um, he's been able to hang in there in the run game, take on some double teams. He's showing up week in and week out, playing with technique, with pad level, and then ultimately when he's gotten his opportunities to rush, he's been able to go and, and factor and do some things, which is good. I think on this sack, he was relentless. He kept going, he worked in, he worked out, he countered back. Um, and I've said it before, I think effort's a big part in sack production, no matter who it is, but it, it was good. It was encouraging to see him kind of factor as a pass rusher in the course. Uh, Jim Lyle. Shane, there was a stretch there. Maybe you had two, four tackles for losses in five plays, and I know you had eight for the game. Was that a was that a season high? And, and what are you doing well that you like there where you get in the backfield making plays like that so much? Yeah, um, I think we're doing a good job building a wall in there. I think the, the linebackers, I know one, you saw Zach and you saw David trigger and they really met the guy, met the guy in the backfield. Oh, Hook timed up and that edge press pressure really well and kind of beat the puller, beat the flasher. Um, and then I, I believe it was probably uh, Elijah out there on the perimeter. They tried to RPO us and he did a good job taking on the blocker out there and getting on one. Um, yeah, really, I think it comes down to the point of attack. Those guys being aggressive, like not, not waiting, not trying to read things out. Like when you get your chance to be aggressive and get downhill, you got to be able to do it. Not only is it going to allow those guys to make TFLs, but it's also going to take off some of those doubles and free up some RD linemen to possibly to make some of those TFLs. So um, just like anything in the run game, I think it's, it's the coordination of it, um, the movement, everything that comes with it. I think the guys were kind of bought in and they were flying around there early making some plays. And one more for me. Um, just, just on the intensity level in the playoff, you know, you've coached – preseason, regular season, playoffs, uh, players can spread the word. But what, what do you tell the young guys who, who have not faced playoff games before, just what it's going to be like? Yeah, I think uh, everything's revamped. Like, every team's here for a reason. They're all really good teams um, playing really good football, right? So I think the, the preparation, the intensity of the week is vital just understanding the importance of practice, the importance of understanding who these opponents are, how they're changing from week to week. Um, and then ultimately, fortunately for us, we've been able to play in some big game this, games this year on, on primetime television. So I think that adds, adds a little bit of familiarity to them. But ultimately, you're playing to survive, right? You're playing to win. You're playing to advance. If you don't win, you're done, right? So I think the urgency and your preparation and the urgency – Coming out of the gate, swinging, ready to go. Like, there can't be any wall. You've got to make sure every play is your best play and, and you're locked in and you're focused and, 
and maximizing our opportunities to make plays when they're there for us, right? And and again, not putting anything more on guys than what they what they can handle or what they should be doing outside of their job. But I think the, the understanding we've got to make sure we're urgent and doing our piece in the defense, being our one eleven on every snap because it's going to come down to a few plays. Like, you know that it's going to come down to a few plays. Who makes them, who doesn't make them. Um, and making sure we're locked in and prepared to make them when we have our opportunities. Got time for uh, two more and then I'll be down. Uh, Emily? Yeah, speaking of uh, making plays, when you see what Ryan Tannehill did with the Houdini Act, do you use that as an example to your guys to make sure they finish the job and wrap them up? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, just briefly here the past few hours watching some of Cincinnati, like you see it from Burrow, you've seen it from uh, Josh Allen, uh, all these quarterbacks, right? They all they all kind of got their skill set. They all never want the play to be dead. They always want to continue and try to get out of things. So I think it's vital. It's it's a fine line. Like you got to be able to wrap them up and corral them, but at the same time, we want to be able to rush. And if, there's a lot of different scenarios when you're kind of getting to the quarterback, whether you're free how you got to attack a guy, whether he's a ducker, so to speak, and he's going to try to roll you off, or he's a more quick guy who might try to spin. Um, I mean, there's there's things that we talk about week, week in and week out, just depending on who the guy is. But, again, like all these guys are trying to make plays. This is a hell of a play by Brian. It really was. Um, hopefully we can keep quarterbacks from doing that to us. Our last one, Teresa. <laughs> Shane, the, the advantage of having the one seed, you all don't have to leave town for a while. Uh, I'm thinking back a couple of years. How how much of an advantage is it being able to stay at home, not having to travel when you're preparing for opponents, it, it, disregarding the fact that you all do have this bye week to, to focus on that kind of thing? Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll find out when we play here next weekend sometime. Um, but hopefully, I think being home – you get the fans, right? You get your you get your hometown fans who've shown up and been great for us all year. They were out in the masses in Houston there. Um, so I think that's one huge advantage. Um, and then some other things, really, it's just preparation and time, the, the travel time, some of that stuff that comes into play. Like you're here, you're preparing here. We're in the office immediately. You get a chance to potentially catch up. Um, want a little bit of rest as well when you're not in the air. I think I think there's things that go into that, but I think the biggest thing is just the fans and, and the excitement, the energy, the atmosphere they're going to bring to Nissan Stadium. Um, we can only doubt where this thing keeps going. Thank you.